everybody from all, all over the world. So yes, as Hannah said, I would like to share with you some of the new features that we have ready for back to school. So let's uh, start with a recap on the new question types we just released uh, before the summer holidays. The first feature has been a request we've had from teachers for some time. Uh, we've previously had a limitation of four answer options for poll and quiz questions. It's now possible to add up to six answer options to both poll and quiz questions. This feature is available today as a free trial with Kahoot Pro, and you can see some examples here in the slide. The next question type we've added is called slider. Slider is a question type designed specifically for questions where the answer is a number. Participants guess the number by moving along a scale and deciding on the number to submit as their answer. Uh, this feature is available today as a free trial with Kahoot Premium. The final question type I would like to share with you is called drop pin. And drop pin is a type of poll question. Uh, students simply drop a pin on an image it's a very versatile question type that can be used in many different ways, some of which you can see as well in the slide today, like where are you in the world or which color is your favorite color or which position would you like to play on the soccer pitch. And a lot of these question types will be available in Coffee Cahoots later today for you to try yourself. The next feature is the one I'm most excited to share with you today. And you get a little bit of a hint with the background here. It is, well, I, actually, I'll let our very own Kahoot Woodchuck introduce the next feature. Over to you, Woodchuck. Good stuff. Luhan, you can go to the next uh, slide, please. Perfect. I'll count you back in, in the 30 seconds, uh, Porik. Nice, thanks you. <laughs> 20 seconds. I'll count from 10 to 5 and you do the rest, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. So, yes, so as you can see, we have been very busy creating new, fun and interactive game modes. These are new ways to play and learn using the millions of Kahoots on the Kahoot platform. All of these game modes are student paced and require students to answer quiz questions in order to get a chance to compete in different mini games. Uh, and within the mini games, you can earn points. The teacher can set the duration of the game and questions are repeated, which incentivizes students to remember the correct answer in order to progress through the game. And with the repeated exposure to questions, content can be reinforced throughout the learning uh, experience. Uh, since these game modes are student paced and not teacher paced like our classic game this gives the teacher the ability to move around the classroom and monitor progress or help struggling students or some other task that they'd like to do while the kids are playing the game with these first few game modes we've created very different game concepts to give teachers and students a variety of ways to play and learn so you can see here the three first uh, game ones that we've we've released the first two are live on the platform today and the last one will be live in a couple of weeks time submarine squad first game called treasure trove it's a player versus player game where students collect jewels to earn points so you answer a number of questions you get to uh, collect jewels in a uh, mini mini game and then you get back to answer questions so you have to answer questions to get into the, the miniature game um, the second game called color kingdoms is a team strategy game so this is where two teams compete against each other to conquer land. Uh, the students who collaborate with teammates and form a strategy are more likely to win. So it's all about knowledge and collaboration with fellow teammates in order to, to win. The third game called Submarine Squad 
is a class game where the whole class needs to work together to try to escape from a, a scary fish. So they're trapped in a submarine. And the submarine is trying to get away from um, the fish and they need to answer questions to try to propel the submarine away from uh, the fish. Individual students at different times in the game will be asked to solve a crisis uh, with the help of the rest of the class. All of our new game modes are included in our Back to School Premium Plus offer that Hannah just mentioned. Uh, and for a limited time, you can try all of them for free by just simply logging in to the platform and starting a new live game. We really want to get your feedback. A big part of the process has been to play test with teachers and students. So we'd really like to get your feedback about these new game modes. But we're also encouraging you to share new ideas for new game modes. So feel free in the chat, for example, today to share with us any ideas you have or your experience playing these game modes so far. We will actually now uh, give you an opportunity to play one or actually more, depending on how much time we have, um, of these new game modes. And we have our very own Steve Sherman, one of our teacher ambassadors, who will also share his experience using these new game modes in his class. Hi, Steve. Hello, oh, Boric, how are you? I'm good. You're looking good there. I like to dress for the occasion. <laughs> Take it away, so, Steve. Are we, are we getting ready to rock and roll? Excellent. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see the presentation. There we go. We would like you all to please sign in. Let's take a look at the pin code. Hannah, you are joining us as well. Yeah, Steve, I'm here. I am ready and excited to demo these brand new game modes. Color Kingdom is a personal favorite of mine. And I know that so many of our people joining in are excited about these game modes. I see people saying, wow, love to have different options between player versus player versus teams versus computer even as an option. And I know now, Steve, I will say that I've never tried Color Kingdoms with more than 50 people, but between you and me and I guess all of our audience, 790 people tuning in right now, now more than ever seems like maybe uh, a good time to break some records. Uh, no, I think we're going to break the system. We want to see if we can <laughs> completely saturate the screen with people. So sign in and what it's going to do is automatically allocate you to one of two teams, either Team Fire or Team Ocean. I have never seen so many names <laughs> popping up. In this. We've only been testing this game out for a short while so it's yeah. delightful to see we're already up to 120 and it's already making me a little bit nervous you know steve i know this is like best used and best case scenario for 50 people so i feel like we're almost pushing it to our limits at 130 and if you don't make it into game mode this game mode this time around with color kingdom i both myself and steve here we are ready to fully narrate the player experience so whether you're in the game or watching the game and taking it part as a host perspective either way is super fun i must just tell you that when you've got fewer players obviously a certain number of blocks are taken when we have 131 players i think it's going to be an absolute frenzy i'm quite excited <laughs> to see know. the results I know exactly. Well, Steve, I'll let you kind of share the perspective of what it looks like from the whole screen, but I'm here to celebrate along the way. No problem. Well, what you will notice is, of course, that you have to answer questions correctly to get the flags and and these flags you're going to actually allocate in certain spaces. Uh, you'll notice that, of course, if you don't get an answer correct, don't worry, many of the questions are repeated. So you will get an opportunity to then get the answer correct the second or third time round. And once you've got your flags, you've got to place them on the battlefield. Now, I must just tell you, some of my students have noticed that not only do you place your flags on the battlefield, but if you are sneaky enough, you can also place a flag over an opponent's color and snatch their piece of battlefield away from them, which I think is pretty cool. And if you go along to the next slide, it does say that your team's goal is to grow your empire by spreading your color across the battlefield. So the more color tiles you have over the battlefield, the better your chance of winning that game. But there is one caveat. If you can surround a zone, then you get to claim the whole zone as well. 
so you do half the work and get twice the reward so something definitely worth considering when you are strategizing during your game but of course i know you are here to play and not just to listen so let's get ready to rumble and remember the view that you're going to see is not going to be the same view that the players have on their screens right now i'm just going to see a battlefield and the rest of you are going to get all the questions appearing on your devices so good luck and see how many of these questions you can answer so oh, cool to you. see wow the territories and the entire kingdoms are already being colored i'm seeing some people in the chat say uh oh the pin is locked we know we're demoing this experience <laughs> and looking to see what it looks like to really take over game modes from 150 players never wow. done before here on kahoot with color kingdoms and game mode i see already amber and christina from texas have the current placement of different tiles and colors, but this looks like it's neck and neck, Steve. But did you notice that it said earlier, 25% of the battlefield had already been covered. Already and that's covered. Only the first couple of seconds. But what yeah. I like about this format is that you've only got two minutes. So literally you've got one minute and five seconds left to try and cover as much space as possible. Ooh, with oh, one minute one remaining. Minute remaining. And with Color Kingdoms, teachers and hosts have the option to count down and set different durations, just like you would in a regular Kahoot question format. We selected two minutes for the game duration today, but all the players are receiving questions after questions on their own independent player devices, while we are seeing what the game board and Color Kingdoms look like from the host screen. So you wow. can toggle that duration to include much more minutes if you want your students to kind of engage with content for a longer period. Now, it's going to be a tough one to call, Hannah. I, I thought that red was in the lead, but then blue came back and almost snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. And then, of course, we have red coming back in again and only 14 seconds left. What is going to happen? This is getting very close. It's very close. Is right. seven seconds. How cool to see people's names on those tiles, too. I see like Dr. F has named a few tiles in color. Christina from Texas is team. there as well. <laughs> Oh, time's time up. is up. So now what it's going to do is give us an indication as to how many tiles your team managed to accomplish. I don't think I've seen so many. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've just won the, the casino. 60 for Team Fire. So Team Fire went ahead. They were 20 tiles ahead of Team Ocean. Please do not feel bad because, of course, it is only a game in case. Absolutely. Have, you know, a game that like does that. give you access to swag. So if you are one of our players and participants that did make it onto the podium and you have that winner's badge on your screen, definitely take a screenshot of it, share it on Twitter, and you might even win some swag. I see some people in the chat that are saying, oh, bummer, I didn't get to participate. But I'm here to say no worries because we are ready for a back-to-back -back new option and another feature with color kingdom plus we have tons of copy cahoots and more chances to play later on today so kind of a cool way to see like what it's like to play on a team but then also individual playing experiences throughout our entire meetup today but it looks like steve we're ready for round two i think we're ready for round two so <laughs> let's get the game pin and it's three one six seven eight seven Let's see if we can uh, get Team Ocean to beat Team Fire this time round. <laughs> so cool to see so many different voices and perspectives joining. I see a few questions in the chat about what game modes look like. Someone is asking, are the teams automatically picked? And yes, I don't know about you, Steve, but Ooh, I, would up to to <laughs> yes, I would not be able to switch. I would not be able to pick We're doing fast. it, we're doing it. We're up to 200. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is a record for sure. I think, Steve, we lock it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm excited I'm feeling about a little this. bit nervous. <laughs> okay. Okay. So as you know, the instructions, of course, you have to answer questions correctly. You will do You do notice that if you got any wrong, there were questions that were being repeated. So that gave you an opportunity to still win some flags and place them on the map. You now get to uh, use your team spirit to try and cover as many of those tiles as possible. And don't forget the strategy try and encircle your opponents and then you get to claim the entire zone that is going to be beneficial for you all right let's get ready to rumble and only two minutes these games are very quick and that means you've got to focus raise a sharp focus let's see what happens <laughs> so true 
And for those of you that are watching from the host screen, we've used games and question formats that are only in our multiple choice classic quiz format. So already 25% of our board is covered. In the first and our players seconds. are interacting <laughs> with multiple choice questions. And the questions are being kind of reviewed and recycled throughout game play. So as a player, it is very likely that you are going to be presented with the same question in more than one opportunity and more than one presentation. So it's a great tool for whether introducing content that maybe is a little bit unfamiliar or perfect for those review opportunities when you're really trying to lock in and get acclimated and really comfortable with classroom content too i i think apparently our players already know that though because I think our they board do. is covered <laughs> <laughs> but i did notice that the red team had claimed over 50 percent of the board blue is clawing back with only one minute left to go and of course as uh, Boric mentioned oh this is another little feature that every now and again it stops the game with one minute to go it does a little count and then of course it plays a second round with the last remaining minutes and this is something that happens at random i haven't seen if there's a structure to that at all but that's very exciting red seemed to be on the ball again blue got bonus that is fantastic that's always a good way to start round two with one minute left to go and Steve asked oh, sorry, it was 30 behind, seconds to go, not just 30 one seconds. Yeah, it really is showing that our board and territories and entire kingdoms were colored before the timer even ran out. So a cool different way to kind of switch up what gameplay looks like, give players a fresh chance of covering their territories. And that bonus piece came from at the very last second of the game mode play. Two people must have claimed that tile and colored it with their team and empire at once. So kind of a toss up in points, if you ask me. Very cool. Very cool. Well, round two was completed. And of course, this one definitely went to team fire. So team fire, you are on fire because you seem to be cruising. <laughs> and, and of course, there was no set uh, format as to who was going to join which team. Uh, I am curious about the, the, this particular mode as a question that I personally have. Uh, will we be able to add additional teams and can we select and move people from one team to another? Because obviously right now it's automated, but I would love to see that feature added into this particular game. Cool, Steve. We appreciate your feedback. And I see so many other people kind of sharing comments, suggestions, maybe even ideas for innovation and evolution of game modes. So cool to see different ideas and great to hear what it actually looks like from a teacher and classroom perspective too. Now, I know Steve, you've had some behind the scenes beta testing access to game modes. So we'd really love to hear your perspective and kind of see and learn what it's looked like in the classroom with your students and how you've explored it with content curriculum, but also from just player interaction and student feedback. So take it away, Steve, excited to hear your reflections. I'm happy to share with you. I think we have a presentation to share. Hopefully it'll be loaded up. And the first thing I wanna talk about, of course, is content. Uh, these particular game modes, and we only saw one at the moment. We saw the one which was the Color Kingdom, but there's of course Treasure Trove as well, which I'll talk about. These particular games are only taking certain types of questions. So they're looking for multiple choice, multi-select, true and false, you will not get questions like your puzzle questions, your slider questions, uh, feedback questions like polls, word cloud, brainstorm, drop pins. Those won't be included in the game. And if you happen to select a Kahoot that does have some of those features, it automatically blocks out those particular questions and it carries on with the rest of the questions that do fit that particular format. Um, now I'd like to talk about the... Uh, second thing, which is review, reveal, and reinforce. Why on earth would you like to use a thing like game mode? What is wrong with the regular Kahoot style that we normally play? Well, first of all, from a review point of view, if you want to review content that you've just covered in class and you want to keep it fresh in their minds, there is a very significant difference between running a regular Kahoot and which could take up to 20, 30 minutes for that particular Kahoot, and game mode, which is focused into two or three minutes, depending on the duration that you set. And I do find that game mode literally sets the students 
off into a different dimension. They actually become zombies when they are playing this mode. They're a different species when game mode is activated. It really is incredibly entertaining to watch. Um, you'll notice that when we were playing the game, we could see just a blank screen and, and we could see the flags being placed on the screen. But what I would normally do is I could walk around because they don't have to look at the screen on the board to see what's going on. They are focused on their devices. And that gives me an opportunity as a teacher to engage with the students while they are busy working. The second point was reveal. If you want to introduce new content to your students, you want to give them a taste of a new section coming up, you want to uh, uh, bring a, it's almost like a blind kahoot where you play a game with content that they have never seen. And let me tell you, when they get to play this version, it's almost like kahoot with jazz hands, if you could picture that. And thirdly, of course, to reinforce, if you want to ensure that the students are going to reinforce their content knowledge through repetition, this game format is a game changer. And one obvious example would be thinking about times tables. If you get them to go through those timetables, they will be able to obviously uh, consolidate that knowledge and, and uh, get it reinforced. Now, what I want to talk about is engagement levels. Now, engagement levels are one of the most fascinating things to see. If you've seen how excited your kids get when they are playing a regular Kahoot, you have no idea what's going to happen when you put them into game mode. So here are three kind of case studies that I would like to suggest um, where I've used it in the past couple of months. Um, so the first one was warm up. Uh, when I was having an actual Kahoot event, I played the game for two or three minutes before the event just to kind of bring the audience in. And in two cases, I had uh, an inter-school sixth grade quiz, which was in person. I also ran uh, the African science quiz, junior and senior online. And in both cases, I ran the game mode as a warm up with different sets of questions. And I found that that kind of brought up a, a, a different tone and got the excitement levels. And I think that was perfect for setting the tone for the rest of the event. Of course, you can use it for team building. I, I was recently at a national science festival and I was tasked with running an icebreaker and I found that regular Kahoot is great because of course you can set an amount of time for each question, but for game mode, the pace is frenetic and teams have to be focused. They have to collaborate and teamwork is essential. And especially if they're using the touch screen to try and catch all the gems flying past in the treasure trove mode, you will see that they are definitely going to get a lot of teamwork going. And finally, consolidation. I will just say that, you know, when you've played a Kahoot with 300 sixth graders and they are all playing the same Kahoot, and then you do it with 200 adults and they are all playing the same Kahoot and 200 high school students. In all three cases, I played two game modes. I played the Color Kingdoms and Treasure Trove and each one was three minutes long. And what amazed me was after those six minutes, I could ask each question to the entire audience and without even looking at the options, they could give me those answers. And that for me is incredible. That teachers, you have no idea. In six minutes, they were able to learn 10 space facts that they had never learned before with absolute ease. And they got every single answer correct. And then of course, I do have some images. I don't know if the, the slide is up with the images, but just to show you the top left-hand corner was a pub quiz. That was where we got the tone going, uh, playing the, the warm-up game. And, and there you can see that was actually the treasure trove because you could see the treasure chests were growing with the numbers of coins they were gathering. Uh, and then, of course, the bottom two, what I wanted to show you is that when you've got small groups of four or five, it is quite large for an event like this. I actually found that two or three was optimal when, when it was uh, involving touch screen and that sort of thing. And then of course, if you do have um, pairs and small groups, it does work well, but let me tell you one thing you know as a teacher, students need to learn how to whisper to each other so that students in a different country 
can't hear them. They get so excited during game mode that everyone in the school knows the answer because they are whispering it, if you know what I mean. And I just want to go into some suggestions uh, in terms of where you would use game mode and that sort of thing. So two versions of the game, um, they, they, they have different appeals to, to my students. So for example, some of the students preferred the treasure trove game because it was individual. So when they were playing as individuals, they can still play as a team, but when they were playing as individuals, they could see their treasure chest growing with coins and they found that visually very pleasing. Uh, of course, some of the other students preferred the color kingdoms because they liked the fact that there was a team effort taking place. They liked working towards a common goal as a team. And I think that that was really exciting to watch as well. Um, my students absolutely love the game modes. And I've already sent in a bunch of ideas to the development team in the hope that some of these features will be tweaked and also some of the new game modes will be added. I won't be sharing all my ideas yet, but I have sent a long email to the development team. But if there was one valuable tip that I could share, that is always cut it at a high. What does that mean? You play your game mode maybe once or twice, and if they are absolutely having the best time, that's when you stop it. You do not play it six or seven times because unfortunately, if you do that, the game loses its excitement. And let me tell you, they will beg, they will plead, they will bribe you with Starbucks vouchers. Do not overuse the game mode. Always cut it at a high and tell them that we will be playing it next week. And that gives them something to look forward to. So hopefully you found these particular tips quite useful. But let me tell you, you are going to have such fun with your students and this new game mode. Steve, as you're sharing all of these anecdotes and personal suggestions, I want to remind everyone that we've heard so many of your helpful tips and top tip strategies on our Kahoot blog. And Steve created an entire kind of reflection and resource for other teachers to visit and revisit as you start to incorporate game modes in your own classroom. And one particular anecdote and kind of memory that you shared is sticking out about snacks in lunchtime. And as a fellow snacker, I felt very connected to your story, how not just students weren't just bribing you with Starbucks vouchers or begging please and thank yous, but didn't you have some students like beg to give you their own lunches out of their packs just to keep playing game modes in Color Kingdoms? Not only that, if you had to go and look at what some of these students bring to school for lunch, you would think that I would be playing this game all day long, just collecting and piling up all those. That I certainly don't need it, that I can tell you. But, but this is the one thing that I found very, very appealing with game mode. And, you know, if you look at the opportunities that come out of it, it's not about who's on top of the leaderboard. This is something a little bit more visual. You can see how it's changing dynamics throughout the game, depending on which game you're playing. Um, I just wanted to share one or two ideas that I had in terms of games that I would love to see. One of them is a horse race where it's not a two or three minute uh, time limit, but there is a racetrack. And as your team starts answering questions, the horses start moving around the track and it's the first horse to cross the line. So the more correct answers you get, the faster your horse is going to move around the track and hopefully you're going to get your horse to race to the finishing line. And I, I mean, those are the kinds of things that, you can, I mean, you have no idea how excited kids get when it comes to these sorts of games. I have to go and explain to the teachers next door. I humbly apologize. In fact, before I start the game, I go to classrooms and I say, I'm warning you now, there will be a noise. I cannot control it. It is beyond my control. Just bear with it. It's only three minutes, Please but it's going to be allowed three volume. minutes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And Steve, I feel like you keep mentioning kids, of course, as a teacher, you're hearing the student and the kid perspective. But here we have so many fellow teachers, adult learners with us that kind of are inspired by this same energy and excitement. And I think it warrants a third and final round of color. Let's changes. do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. I love these sorts of things. <laughs>
Awesome. We already have one player that is ahead of the game, ready to play. But let's end it on our highs, just like you said, Steve, and really build that momentum and excitement. Our third and final color kingdoms is 331-3249. And those numbers are climbing already. We're going to go more than 200. I think we should. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Sign up, don't let it lock it. Let's go and break the system. Oh, we're up to 120 already. I think we're oh, going to get up to 200. Close. It's Easily. getting close. You see? Oh, I'm starting to shake down. in my boots. This is, we are close, Steve. Will we, okay, okay. Well, no, keep going, I'm keep nervous. going. Let's go to 250. I know we can do it. <laughs> we're oh up to goodness. 229. Ooh. As people are getting, Come on, let's I do it. Guess at the very least, 250. We're let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we're, we're brave and Kahoot. This is, oh my gosh. This is going to be insane. It's going to be quarter full in the first 10 seconds. Oh, I can, we'll blink in the territory and game will be covered. And I think we have pushed off. Oh, we're, we're pushing limits here. I love it. This is probably the most oh. that the game mode has ever had before. Oh, it's not probably. This is the most. Oh, this the is mode. the most. I love it. We're almost at <laughs> yes. 300. Wow. 286. Hey. Let's get ready to rumble. We are ready. I see people already chanting for Team Fire to take the lead again, but let's let's go I'm for it. I'm keen to Why see not? how quickly this, this field is going to fill up. Well, it depends on the questions. If the questions are a little bit harder, then obviously it takes a little bit longer, but let's see. True. Right. Woo. Team Ocean, here's your chance to redeem yourself. I don't know. Our chat is very Team Fire right now. It seems like <laughs> there is quite a split. <laughs> and this one's a three minute. Oh, you've got time. It's going to get insane. Oh, my goodness. Extra time Here we go. And more Here we people. Go. Wow. And it's so cool to see all the names. Oh, my 25%, gosh. 25% of the ball in the first 15 seconds. Wow. But here we go. It seems Katie like and Melissa are... are going crazy. Kate and Peter and B. Jones. Fuzzy Fry, Peter, Edek over there. BJ, JB and Kat. Look at them. They are moving and grooving. I love it. Math Mom, you are there. But who's going to start? Are they trying to encircle their opponents? Oh, look at that. Ooh, round one. Round number one. That's interesting. So it ended after one minute. Let's see what Can happens. I see. Ooh. Ooh. Team Fire is already taking that lead but there is there's time for redemption from Tina. what's going Timo. on why are team fire just <laughs> creaming this game oh Ooh, but and team ocean points. got the bonus points round two come on team ocean you can do this and i'm seeing some new joiners in the chat asking like what is the goal of game modes obviously one goal of game modes in color kingdom is to learn obviously to have fun but in the game mode objective, the goal is to cover as many land tiles and as much of your color kingdom's territory as you can. So with each answer, if with each question answered correctly, you have opportunities to earn flags that color your empire and color your kingdom, hence the name color kingdoms. And here we see it happening in live time, which is Woo! pretty cool. Round two is dead. Round two, uh, Team Ocean. I must just tell you, Team Fire is on fire. And what I like about this particular version is that I can't see any of the questions. I have no idea what the questions are, but we can actually see what's going on from a, a, a game point of view, an overall point of view. And it gives us as teachers an opportunity to interact with the students and move around and do that sort of thing. Yeah, how cool. Now we're kind of seeing what it looks like as a player. So you'll see this player screen, questions are presented, you earn your flags and those flags take you back to color kingdoms and you have opportunities to click on tiles that then transform your empire and build your kingdom. So here we are in the player perspective right now, claiming those tiles, answering questions truly as quickly as we possibly can as this game is definitely speed is important completely and what i have noticed as i did indicate that literally at the end of the game because they've played one or two versions of the same game but in two different game formats it really does reinforce the content knowledge Yes, reinforcement, 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 and some review sprinkled in. And you can use really any type of content and curriculum with game modes. I see someone asking, where did these questions come from? Who made the questions? 
I personally made the questions this time around, but really your questions can be about any topic, any curriculum and any curriculum area. And we know that Kahoot game modes work best with multiple choice quiz question types as you're seeing here. So all question types are formatted that same quiz style. And here we are ready to see the final reveal of our game mode podium. It looks like Blue has a chance. Wow. Oh, Blue did it, Team Ocean! You redeemed Team yourselves. Ocean has been redeemed. Exciting. Oh, I guess team boy. Fire. But Team Fire, they won overall because they won three out of the four. So well done, Team Fire. That was fantastic. How cool to see so many rounds and so many opportunities. I think game modes are so unique to the Kahoot experience and so fun to see different ways that players can both interact with each other in a team, but also it's so personally motivating to work through those questions and repeat and review and reinforce, like you said, regardless of that team experience or independent individual devices. So cool to see kind of both perspectives and both point of view throughout this game. Absolutely. Mode. I do love the fact that they are bite-sized games. They're only three minutes and you can always fit three minutes into a lesson when you need it. Uh, it's a great opportunity to warm up the students and even as a treat to end off the week if they've been behaving themselves so nicely. Yes, we love those Friday Kahoot opportunities for sure. <laughs> as we experience now three rounds of Color Kingdom game modes, I'm just wondering if anyone in the chat has some options or really ideas on what content areas or what part of your school day or even how you might be including Color Kingdoms or one of our other awesome game modes into your classroom content. Steve shared that it's great for those community building opportunities, those review opportunities. And I know Steve, you share so much about science and STEM content but I'm seeing other people in the chat maybe share other options or other content areas like reviewing literacy terms, talking about how you could build community with vocabulary, talking about how you can really extend game modes to so many different environments, exit tickets, biology, vocabulary review, really any content area. So Steve, thanks for helping us demo that and give everyone kind of the sneak peek at what game modes look like.